the scientific method. Humans have, of course, been trying to figure out our natural world since, well, forever. But the development of an organized way to test a question you might have about the natural world is a pretty new concept, and that's the scientific method. I'm Thor Giese. Since the dawn of time, humans have sought to understand their natural world and what a world it is. We're going to explore it through science, history, language, food, and great stories. Welcome to Thor's Outdoor Science Academy. Even though you could get away with saying forms of the scientific method were used in ancient times, the process would have been different from today, and not as well known. Not that many people could read back then. It wasn't until the 1600s in England when Sir Francis Bacon, mm, Bacon, started to get a handle on a method or organized way of conducting scientific inquiry, which became the scientific method. While Sir Francis Bacon, mm, Bacon, was extremely important in his contribution to the scientific method. Remember, this was a collection of knowledge from many, many people over a very long period of time. Another early scientist, Sir Isaac Newton, who lived just after Sir Francis Bacon, mm, Bacon, put the idea of collaboration in science perfectly. He said, if I have seen further, it is from standing on the shoulders of giants. Early scientists were philosophers in a lot of ways. By the way, philosophy means love of wisdom, but some folks aren't so wise, don't love wisdom all that much. And that leads to bad science. So much bad science being done in the world is when people start with a conclusion. By the way, that's what you're supposed to end with. Something they just believe is true about the natural world and not something that they have concluded or proven. If you run the scientific method backwards, you end up confirming something you already believe without ever giving yourself the opportunity to be open-minded. When following the steps of the scientific method, you have to expect your hypothesis could be wrong. If you are doing good science, you are probably wrong most of the time, and that's a good thing. Running the scientific method backwards is kind of like running a cake recipe backwards. So you start out with an empty pan that's already hot, Top it with some sprinkles. Throw in some icing. Whoa, take all the batter stuff. Mix it all together with some egg and milk. And you're gonna whisk it up a little bit. Oh yeah, gotta finish it off some cooking spray. There it is. So. This is bad science right here. And you know, it actually doesn't look terrible, but if you eat it, you will get very, very sick. Let's see what happens if you bake a cake correctly, following the method correctly. You end up with a perfectly baked cake with perfect sprinkles all over it. I'm standing in a real 1800 schoolhouse on the grounds of the Red Mill Museum in Clinton, New Jersey. Truly a step back in time. Aristotle is considered to be the father of modern day science. Well, it was Sir Francis Bacon, mm, Bacon, who really codified the scientific method. Aristotle understood observation was the key to asking questions about the natural world. That's what you're supposed to begin with. For the scientific method to work, there is an order to it, and here it is. The scientific method. Observe the natural world. Create a hypothesis, which is a testable idea if you ever watch Dinosaur Train, you know what that means. Collect data about your hypothesis. Experiment. Have an idea for your expected results from said experiment, and then build a conclusion off the data and your observations to either confirm or deny your hypothesis. And optional e-bacon. But yeah, that's it. It sounds so obvious, but again, it took like 2,000 years to really establish the scientific method in an organized way. And when this method was really used to confirm facts of the natural world, it started us on a path 
towards the convenience of the modern world. You cannot downplay the role of the scientific method. It is the best idea humans have ever come up with. Interesting fact, the second best idea humans have ever come up with is bacon. Equally important is the creation of a class of individuals in a society whose main goal in life is to do science. The scientists in ancient Greece and 17th century England both came from societies that were not great on basic human rights, but did foster cultures of learning, mostly for the upper classes. Their cultures actually rewarded people who dedicated their lives to learning and saw how beneficial it was to have wise, educated people in positions of power, those individuals who loved wisdom. Both the scientific method and those early full-time scientists brought us to where we are now. Don't get me wrong, there are still plenty of problems in the world, but at least our average lifespan isn't 30 years old like it was back in the day. We have medical science to thank for that, and we have bacon. The scientific method provides an objective, standardized approach to conducting experiments, and in doing so, improves their results. When scientists use a standardized approach, it helps them to stick to the facts and limits their own personal, preconceived ideas. And remember, the knowledge that we have inherited from the ancients. If I have seen further, it is from standing on the shoulders of giants. See you next time on Thor's Outdoor Science Academy.